The 2023 box office struggled with film delays because of the Hollywood strikes, a focus on streaming and dwindling interest in superhero movies. The highest grossing movies of the year are Barbie, followed by Super Mario Brothers movie and Oppenheimer, um, which both of the second are universal films. I only saw the third one. I Oh, you did? I saw Oppenheimer. Oh. That was it. Okay. Well, I saw the first two. Me too. Because we have kids. You didn't go to Guarding the Galaxy or Guardians of the Galaxy? It, no, I saw that on the plane. Yeah. So did that you was, really? Mm hmm Joining us now to discuss what to expect in 2024 is Paul Dare Garabian. No, no, no. I can do better than this. Dare Garabian. How did I do? You got it. You Com did score it senior perfectly. Senior. Thank you. I, you know what? I want to get it right because, I, you know, I have a three-syllable first name and it's important that it's accurate. So, Paul, well, thank my you name, for being here. My name won't, fit, it won't even fit on a movie marquee. That's a problem <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the much-proclaimed demise of the superhero movies. I'm looking at the top box office here, and I still see three superhero movies made it to the top ten. It's not all bad, is it? That's right. I mean, there's this idea that there's superhero fatigue, and you make a great point when you look at those top movies. There are many superhero movies among them. I think it's more an issue with audiences who are uninitiated, who aren't necessarily big fans of comic book movies, having to do a ton of homework to figure out how all these characters and universes fit together. There's a huge amount of these superhero programs on the small screen as well. And I just think there's been an oversaturation of that. But yes, if you look at those top movies worldwide and, and domestically, a lot of superheroes there. But this weekend with Aquaman and The Lost Kingdom, uh, that earned about $38.3 million for the four days, according to our Comscore data. I think people had hoped for more. But yeah. I think that audiences... <laughs> love going to the movies. And if you have a unique or different way of telling a story, like with Five Nights at Freddy's, uh, Godzilla Minus One, and in fact, this past weekend, we had two Japanese cinema and two Indian cinema titles in the top 10. I think we're getting a lot of actionable intelligence from audiences who are saying either with their absence or presence at the movie theater what they want to see on that big screen. How much of that is because it's super important for the movie makers to appeal to an inter international audience? I mean, I'm looking at the domestic yeah. earnings versus worldwide earnings. In every case, like Barbie, more than doubled what it made domestically with what it made internationally. That says to me you got to make movies that appeal to Europeans and Asians and South Americans. You just hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what's going on. And in fact, the first Aquaman movie earned almost 71% uh, of its box office outside of the U.S. and Canada in the international market. In fact, this weekend, it did much more business internationally than it did in North America. So you're absolutely right. A lot of these, uh, having a global view uh, is very important, both from the filmmaker perspective uh, and also from the studio perspective. And if you look on streaming, look how much content on streaming is internationally flavored, has a point of view that has, you know, everybody is kind of included in that. There's something for everyone there, but you also need it to be unique and sure. different. But yes, a lot of those franchises, the big ones really rely on that international box office. Fast X, you know, the Fast and Furious franchise, for years, those have to totally relied on that international box office to build up their profitability. 